What is a mandala? Why do different cultures and religions use these intricate designs in their practices? Mandala, the magical circle, part one of two on Kids Wonderland. Continue watching to find out the answers. Booth Bahasha. Hello, precious viewers. Do you know what this saying means? It means good day in Tajik, the official language of Tajikistan. I am Avzuna. The people of the Republic of Tajikistan wish Allah blesses each one of us so that we can all be like artists who bring joy into the world. Today is indeed a good day. Do you know why? Because it's International Artist Day. Supreme Master Ching Hai designated April 3rd as a special day to honor all the artists who are more than just ordinary human beings. Because two artists, they're half saints already, before they even practice any meditation or yoga. The Indian proverb is saying that uh, two artists are half saints. Now, because they love all, they love, love, love all the time including the adversaries. There's no enmity among real artists. I myself personally have many wonderful experiences with artist people and art lovers as well. They're a special kind of people, very, very special. Through all my many expos and performances, which you kindly arranged and then invited me, sometimes surprised, sometimes half surprised. <laughs> the Stanley artists have brought so much beauty and happiness to our world. To celebrate International Artists Day, we are presenting part one of the two-part series Mandal, The Magical Circle. First, let us take a look at some of the amazing pictures. beautiful? Do you see any commonalities between the artworks? <coughs> yes, they all have circles or are in a circular shape. All of them can be categorized as mandalas. The Sanskrit word for circle or wholeness. Sanskrit is a classical Indian language. The circular design of mandalas gives us a sense that everything in the universe is connected and life continues forever. As shared in the pictures, the easiest place to find mandala images are in nature. They are everywhere. Flowers are the best examples of beautiful and colorful mandalas. Most of them are circular with clearly defined centers and edges. Take your time to really observe each flower, its shape, color, texture, and fragrance. Locate the center and periphery. Some flowers, like tiger lilies, may be tricky to spot a circular shape. But if you look at it from the top down, there it is, a perfect mandala. How about fruits and vegetables? Many are round, and when sliced crosswise, we can see mandala patterns with seeds in the center radiating outward in the shape of stars. We can find many circular treasures on the beaches too. Seashells, sand dollars, starfish, sea urchins, round stones, and so on. You can paint mandala designs on the shells and stones. Let's see, what else? Oh yes, snowflakes. Do you want to see how snowflakes form? Wow, snowflakes are so beautiful when we can see them one at a time. There must be billions of them, each one different from another. Although the mandala is usually a spiritual symbol that represents the universe in Hinduism and Buddhism, mandalas appear in all ancient cultures throughout the world. Tibetan monks create sand mandalas as a prayerful meditative practice. This mandala shows circles inside and outside of squares with a distinct center focus. After it's completed, the beautiful mandala is dismantled to show the temporary nature of life. At 
the other end is a globe, we can watch a demonstration of a Navajo sand painting, which is also a sacred art. It conveys the god's power. Here, different colored sands are used with skillful fingers. The Aztec calendar is a mandala. That is a sacred calendar of the Mexica. The geometric diagram shows two very different calendar systems, one being the 365-day agricultural year that we follow, and the other is the 260-day sacred year, where the days are described according to the Aztec gods. Interestingly, mandalas are also the astrological zodiac signs. Let's take a look at the sun sign that we are most familiar with today. Another example is the Chinese zodiac. As you can see, Chinese zodiac signs are represented by 12 animals in their rifle positions on a recurring 12-year cycle around the mandala. Starting with the rat, then ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. They are all my favorite animals. This year, 2021, is the year of the ox. Apparently, mandalas are an art form or language understood by people from different parts of the world. Why is that? <coughs> Suprema Siching Hai, an enlightening master, also a great artist herself, shares with us some insight about art. Uh, Bimon 我是也许那个突破一些成见的困难，所以艺术非常非常重要。嗯，艺术是最好的。I'm <笑> sure there are Mandela symbols in other religions and cultures we have yet to discover. One thing is for certain: circles are a magical shape that reminds us of our connection to others as well as to ourselves. Carl Jung, a famous Swiss psychoanalyst, studied mandalas extensively for his own self-growth and with his patients. He believed that mandala circles represented wholeness and the act of drawing a mandala is actually a way for us to connect with the self. The mandala centers a person or a community making them aware of one's place and purpose in the world. Making mandala art helps us concentrate in the present moment. A powerful relaxation tool that promotes inner harmony and balance that is also not difficult to create. Have you ever made a nature mandala? Here's how to do it. Let's gather in a circle. The English word circle translated into Sanskrit becomes mandala. Mandala is a ritual symbol for the universe, the cosmos, wholeness. This simple shape with all points equal around its center has given humans a ready metaphor for the infinite. The cosmic circle, the snake biting its tail, and the sphere whose centre is everywhere are all mandalas, as well as the brightly coloured guides for meditation we recognise from the East. In this activity, we'll work together to create a mandala out of natural elements, symbolising and enacting our connection with nature. We will work together in silence. To collect elements for our mandala, we split into groups of maximum five people. Each group goes out into the surrounding area, gathering natural elements without cutting or destroying anything. The intention is to connect and act mindfully. As you search for things to use, you can explore their energy, their story, and their strength. Whatever you take, maintain respect for the place and cultivate gratitude. Once we've collected everything we need, we come back together as a group still without speaking, start creating a mandala by placing what we've collected down on the earth. We set the centre of the circle and its perimeter, and then we decorate it with our natural elements. As we add objects to the mandala, we might recognise them from another perspective, beyond what we thought when we first chose them. 
standing back in a circle. What happened during the making of the mandala between you and the group? And between you and nature? What would you do differently if you could do it again? What did you learn from this activity? And how are you going to use it in your everyday life? Each mandala may mean something different to different people depending on the circumstances or time in their life. Wouldn't it be fun to make mandala art with a few friends, quietly, and surprise each other with your creations? All you need is a piece of paper, colored pencils, or pastels. Draw a large circle and a dot in the center. Take a deep breath. Let your heart relax and open to curiosity and wonder, which will lead you to more magical circle experiences. We welcome your ideas and feedback to help us improve our programs on Kids Wonderland. Please send them via suprememastertv.com forward slash kw. Talented viewers, thank you for being with us for part one of Mandala, the magical circle. Please tune into the second episode next Saturday. Bye.